Good morning, Raul. This is Jim Gibbons of Cliff Jones RV. I'm going to do a little instructional video. What we're looking here, uh, Raul, is a the 29TE that we, you originally uh, had sent the information on. This is a customer's unit, and it's sitting right next to one of the vibes that we're talking about. So you can see it side by side, uh, the difference in the two units. One is the Gray Wolf with what's known as stick and tin construction and the Vibe is the one with aluminum and block uh, insulation. So this is out in our area, just to give you an idea of our yard. We do sell a lot of tractors. Uh, we're the number one Mahindra tractor uh, selling company in about four states here. This is our uh, stalls for doing service. We have a couple of customers uh, units there working. That's where we stage the units, that sort of thing. This is the tractor package that's about to go out. <clears throat> so I'm going to walk back here to the back of the lot and we're just going to do a general overview uh, of types of, of uh, RVs. <clears throat> Over here to my right hand side, we start with the big boys. These are fifth wheels. Um, typically, row the fifth wheels, you know, they'll range from 48,000 all the way up to 70,000. It's depending on the amenities and the size. Uh, they usually weigh around 12,500 pounds up to 14,000 pounds. The next is a bumper pull Laredo. The difference between the Laredo and the Vibe is not the construction necessarily. Uh, the Laredo tends to be a lot more um, aesthetic. You know, it's got finer woodwork, uh, better material on the on the couches, that sort of thing. It's a it's a prettier unit. Um, on the next video I send you, I picked out a vibe I think you'll be interested in. Um, as you can see. Uh, relative between the two they're about the same size and all these units are going to have uh, that we're talking about today with the aluminum <coughs> and fiberglass siding they're going to have the 50 amp service with the uh, two ACs one of them is going to be 13,500 BTU and the other is going to be 15,000 BTU so that's about 2.4 tons of AC now we move back here to the other, uh, these are price point units. <clears throat> these are uh, the Stick and Tin uh, Cherokee. Uh, they have some nice features to them. Uh, they're just not quite constructed as well as the ones you and I are gonna be talking about. But you can take a look at it right there. So some of the things, generally speaking, uh, that I like to talk about, and you'll see again in the next video, is on these units uh, it's really important I think to have a uh, electric jack on them I mean it's nothing worse than trying to crank one of these big babies up and down manually and uh, we order them with that option they have uh, a light on the front of them so you can see what you're doing if you're moving around uh, one of the things you can note here is that a lot of these RVs, Raul, they put nitrogen in the tires. Uh, they do that to make them run cooler. Now, you can, you know, had you have a problem or whatever, um, you, can, you can put one on there with air in it, but the nitrogen tends to run cooler. All these RVs, they're, they're not regular truck tires. They're, they're, all the RVs come with tra a specific trailer tire. Uh, some of your better ones, tires, um, they're a little expensive, uh, but they're well worth it. They come in 10 and 14 ply. You know, you and I are used to six ply or four ply on our pickup trucks. Well, these are 10 and 14 ply. Uh, I believe the ones that they come with are about eight ply. So uh, that's something to consider down the road. Uh, some of the, that's, thing, that, that's something to watch out for. Um, you know, when you're looking at RVs, you want to always ask the guy what kind of tires they got on them. Because uh, some of those low-end Chinese tires, they'll last probably four or 5,000 miles. 
and it's disastrous when a tire blows out. It'll, you know, mess up the RV. And that's something we really, really don't want to be looking for. We talked the other day, yesterday, or last night rather, about 50 amp service versus 30 amp service. Uh, some of these units, you know, you, one of the things you got to watch out for is to make sure that they are uh, wired for 50 amp service, even though they may have one AC in there. Because, you know, if you remember, you and I laughed last night about how the guys would eventually come and put a second AC in it, run extension cord down the ceiling and down a wall and outside with another 15 amp service. That's just a no bueno for sure. Uh, you don't want to do that. That's a junky solution. Um, here's something that no matter what RV you buy, Raul, uh, where you have your city water connection, all RVs uh, have PVC piping in them. And they uh, are rated to about 45 to 50 pounds of pressure. So what can happen is you'll be camping somewhere, maybe at an independent camp spot, the guy will have a, uh, his own water well and he's pushing out 65, 70 pounds of water pressure. And unbeknowing to you, when you hook your water hose to his faucet and turn it on at this city water connection, what you're trying to achieve is just steady flow of water just like you have in your house, which works, but with that kind of pressure, uh, it can blow the joints uh, loose inside and flood your RV, and that is not a good day out. And I don't care what RV you buy, this is something to watch for. So for about 14 or 15 bucks, you buy a little regulator, a restrictor, and you put it on your water hose and you screw it into your RV and that holds the water pressure down to about 45 pounds of pressure and you're eliminating a huge, a huge problem um, before it occurs. So don't forget that. That's the biggie biggie right there. Uh, that can happen with any RV. So uh, that's just a, you know, just a pointer there. Uh, a lot of people on these units they get confused between uh, levelers and stabilizers. Okay, the only units that come with actual um, levelers are the, uh, the real big high-end units like the fifth wheels and that sort of thing. They actually have 25,000, 20 to 25,000 pound jacks at each corner that run on hydraulics. Uh, and they do have auto leveling system that can actually design to pick up one side of the unit, you know, like if you were parked on an incline or something. That's not the case in the, the uh, bumper pulls. You have a uh, stabilizer and what that's meant to do is you park on relatively level ground, you crank it down to the ground, give it a couple more turns and just tighten it up and that just stabilizes the whole units. Now, a lot of these units, they always come with these hand cranks. Um, good trick is to uh, go get you a battery uh, impact, like a Makita, something like that. You know, a battery, uh, you, you can get them at Home Depot and put a socket on it and you just reach down there and hit it uh, with that Makita and it makes life a lot, a lot more easier. So, uh, one other thing I wanted to talk about uh, kind of in this instructional is what's known as a black tank flush. In the years back, they used to uh, uh, not have this. And when you're dumping your black water, which your black water is what the water that comes from the toilet, you dump that, pull that, open that valve first, then you open the gray water. The gray water is the water that um, comes from your shower and your sinks and that helps flush out the black tank. So now this is this black tank flush has been added and it's a feature where you hook a water hose to it with your valves open and it just flushes through. Because in the years past you had to, without that, you had to go in, flush the toilet, swish it, flush it four or five times, try to get it clean. You don't have to do that anymore. And all of our units have the black tank flush. Uh, that's, that's a really, much better solution. So uh, I will uh, talk about, let's see, one more thing that's real common in the industry 
is uh, hot water heaters. And you've got to be cautious because some of them run on propane, some of them uh, uh, only run on pro propane. The ones we're going to be talking about run on propane and electricity because if you're paying $35 a night to park somewhere, you don't need to be burning your propane to heat the water. You need to be burning that guy's electricity because you're paying for it. So one of the dead giveaways here, when you open up this side, they're all going to look like this. You know, you'll see, you'll see them on almost every RV. Um, the, the key here to know that it's an electric as well as propane. Obviously, you can see the propane with the um, pilot light and all that there. <clears throat> but this little black box back here in the back, that's the dead giveaway. That's your heating element. That's your electric heating element. So, as in this case, this is electric and propane. Uh, they're commonly they're six gallon uh, water heaters. Doesn't sound like a much, like a lot of, you know, a lot, but it is because <clears throat> uh, most showers people use about three gallons. As soon as you start using hot water, it comes on, tries to keep up with you. And if you did run it out of, uh, uh, you know, hot water, within about, with only six gallons, within about 10 minutes, you're gonna be back up to having some hot water. So uh, we don't get any complaints on that at all. Um, that's something that uh, we just don't hear about from, from anybody. Uh, the other thing that you'll see is um, you'll see these vents here on the side of all the RVs. Uh, this is a vent for your furnace inside, so you have uh, fresh air going in uh, on an intake, and then you have the exhaust, which has got CO2 in it. Um, one of the tricks here you want to watch for is you got to make sure that, uh, and we sell them, uh, and you can make them. You want to put some window screen over these holes because down here in Texas we have a lot of dirt divers and those dirt divers just love to make nests inside those things <clears throat> and once they block and restrict the airflow uh, then your heater's not going to work. All right well I'm going to cut this uh, this off a little bit that's just some tidbits and uh, here in a minute I will go ahead and make a video of one of the units that I think you're going to like. Uh, so thanks for watching this is Jim Gibbons Cliff Jones RV Sealy Texas 281-802-0630 and this was a film for Raul Ramos. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye.